Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so how long has that record been around? Uh, we did the store uh, three years ago, but I've been putting out records since like 1993. Okay. Guitar Wolf and Oblivion stuff. Okay, what was the first release on that? Uh, the Guitar Wolf record. They dropped off a tape and went back to Japan. And I said, man, we should do a, we should do a record. And they thought I made a 45. And they said, okay. And then I sent them 200 albums. And uh, they said, oh, shit, we got a record. Yeah, and this is pre... They weren't there on Matador. This is pre-Matador, I guess. Right? This was their first record. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they they didn't know what they were doing. We didn't know what we were doing. So, that's yeah. great. It was but, just basically me in my apartment forever. And are the Oblivions just totally like wrapped up? Do you guys ever play together again sometimes? Or? Nah, I mean, we see each other, but uh, you know, right. we played the Blackout, which was supposed to be our last show. I mean, we might do it again, but yeah. there's really no point to it. Anymore. When was the Blackout? When was the uh, last year. Okay. Yeah. Was the Blackout in Memphis? No, 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 it was Chicago. Oh, okay. Chicago oh, that's Blackout. right. You know, Alex was talking about it. Yeah, it was, our la it was the last Blackout. We love those guys. So they said, you know, do you want to do it? Sure. Sounds like, sounds like fun. Yeah, we talked to Jack last night. He's supposed to be coming here today. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Jack's, Jack's amazing. So are you, like, born and raised in Memphis? No, nah, I've been here about 17 years now. Yeah. Sounds like a long time. It is. Yeah, yeah Jack said he'd been here for, like, 20-something years. I was like, wow. <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we we all sort of. Uh, Greg actually grew up here, so he was okay. he was the Memphian, true, true, true Memphian. In the yeah, because the Oblivions are like you know sort of like the most famous band from Memphis. So I always, I mean, me yeah, being from yeah, New York and, and, and just yeah. being in around other cities and kids talking about rock and roll. Right. It's always mentioned about the Oblivions, and I think you can hear like the influence from your guys' records on like, other records. So. Yeah, it was, it's been good. You know, it's, it's sort of like a whole tradition of weirdo underground bands, you know, from here, like Tab Falco and Alex Chilton were doing stuff. And, right. Know, there's there's always been that kind of stuff, and it never really gets beyond a certain level, but, you know, people love it. Jack went on some uh, Alex Chilton records, didn't he? Uh, I don't know if he ever like... did. He might have. I mean, Alex is, Alex is kind of doing his own, I mean, he's always done his own thing. So. Does Alex Chilton still live here, or? Mm, he lives in, well, actually, I don't know where he lives now. He, I think he still lives in New Orleans. Um, Jack actually, Jack played, I think, on the last Tab Falco record. Um, they recorded it uh, with Jeff Evans over right by where Jack lives. And Jeff Evans was in 68 Comeback, right? Yeah, Gibson Brothers 68 Comeback. Cool. And, yeah, he's amazing. Also, I, yeah, I was told to, to, to meet him and talk to him, and he was like a man about town. Hopefully but, he'll show but I, up. But I haven't met him yet. And, uh, if you see a, a very dapper <laughs> man in like a velvet suit, that's probably... <laughs> a velvet suit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I know Nick, who was in that um, yeah. 68 Comeback, as well as the uh, American Death Row. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard they just played here. Again yeah, recently. yeah. It was, it was packed. It was really? great. Yeah, it's kind of like, they've been going for so long that people kind of, sometimes they pay attention to them and sometimes they don't, you know, and... Right now, it seems like people are back into them in a big way. Right. <laughs> so you guys just put out this Jay Retard single? Yeah, today. I just listened to it. It's fucking awesome. Isn't it good? It's, really it's different. Yeah, it's yeah. It's totally different than anything yeah, he's yeah, done. Yeah. I think it's great. And I really like that he covered a Go Between song. I know. I think I, that's right I, on. Because it's sort of like what you would not expect at all. I know. I think yeah. if people hear it without knowing who it is, I'll go, this is great. Who is this now? Really? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And people that know who it is will go, yeah, I can see Jay doing that, you know. He's got a good melodic sense. He can sing. So. How how many releases has Gone done at this point? I mean, uh, this is third, the thirty first. Thirty first. So wow. we've done a couple more that didn't have catalog numbers, but I think it's around there. Do you yeah. check out the stuff on eBay? or like records that are going for a ridiculous amount? Because that usually so, happens yeah. when there's small pressings on whatever. Like I yeah, but we a never we never tried to do that. I mean, we tried to keep people keep it in print. If it was going to sell more, we tried to yeah. keep it in print, but. After a certain period, yeah. yeah. After a, after a certain period of time, it's sort of like that's done. Let's go on to the next thing. So you know, right. I understand that too. But so there's no record that's specifically worth a lot of money. Um, I don't I mean, know. I think Jay's test pressings that he started to sell were worth <laughs> money, and um, the Guitar Wolf record went for some more money. And the first, the Oblivion's record I put out was worth some money. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it's worth money. It's worth money. It's, well, it's, it's just, still the eBay's, same record. I know, you know but eBay's like take yeah, eBay's taken away from like you know finding records just randomly and being right, like right, right, oh, right, you know, right. Yeah. yeah, it's been sitting there for. I mean, I used to go to Austin and find my own records and buy them back for a dollar because I didn't have any more yeah. and sell them again. You know, <laughs> right. It's great. Johnny Bone and the Dry Heaves and all these dumb records. Oh, okay. how many how many bands have you been in? 
Um, probably like five or six, just kind of jokey bands, okay. including the Oblivions. Yeah. Okay. But Bad Times, no- Oblivions, True Sons of Thunder, uh, New Memphis Legs, a bunch of really one-off kind of things too. How did you get to start? Did the label basically fun to start opening a record store? Or? Nah, me and Zach, Zach moved back to town and was kind of restless and wanted to do something. Mm-hmm. And um, so we were looking to open a bar or a, some kind of retail thing. And uh, actually, Greg had this space as a record store. And then he um, was moving out of town with his wife. And we were in the middle of trying to figure out what we were doing. Well, this is already a record store, it's open. It's just go and try to be a record store. Right. Yeah. Is this the only independent record store in Memphis? No, this there's a few. This is the one that I feel like everyone talks about. No, the Shangri-La has been around. I actually moved here to open up Shangri-La in whenever it was, 2000 or whatever. And uh, so they've been going for a long time. They're more established than, than we are. But we have kind of our, you know, thing that we do. And I was I was selling stuff out of my apartment already. Um, not drugs. <laughs> I was selling other things. I was selling, uh, you know, Black Lips singles and stuff, you know, back before all that stuff, you know, it's just like, seriously. See, some of their singles are worth shitloads of money now, which, yeah, they, which they don't even own some of them. It's yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they, <laughs> like, we were selling, I was selling years. their first single and like, they came to my apartment, we we're hanging out, and they're like, oh, this is what, we, okay, we thought you were like a real, you know, thing, or like, oh, this is real. A real you know? thing. Yeah. And yeah. They, yeah, they, it was awesome. So we've been, you know, it's just kind of funny seeing how things go. Yeah, how do you feel about like the Memphis bands and, and do you think you're big outside of Memphis? Because it's really kind of an ancestral like music yeah. creating scene in Memphis. So a lot of people, uh, you know, not too many bands. Jay's gotten out of town a lot. Jack's sort of gotten out, you know, but a lot of them don't tour that much. Right. Like we put out this Harlan T. Bobo record last year after it had been out for years, and he just never toured behind it. No one outside of Memphis really knows him, you know, except for people that are just totally into Memphis stuff. So. It's, uh, you know, it's sort of people in Memphis's fault, and you know, people here are not really careerist kind of, you know, I'm gonna make it. You right. know, I'll do anything to make. It. They have fun making music, and if they tra- travel around a little bit, that's great. But you know, they, they don't have that kind of killer instinct. Well, I think with Memphis, it's just because like it's good music, so it's taken a life of its own with like the subculture of rock and roll all over the country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think people relate to that, you know. But it doesn't mean they're going to be successful, you know. Yeah. 